And so hoping this is going to help with that wind situation when I'm outside trying to record or when I am outside recording. I read something before that you could cut off a teddy bear's ear and put it over your mic. Well, I don't know how that would really work. And I'm not really sure how this is gonna work either. I just now got this in the mail. And of course I have, or Ken actually ordered this for me. And I just gotten it today in the mail from Amazon. And when I mention things like this that I have gotten from Amazon, are you all interested in me leaving the link below, even though um, there's no kickback for me? If there is, or if there's a way I could sign up for some kickback, don't think that I wouldn't uh, do it, you know? <laughs> so just saying there. Um, but anything that I've shared thus far, other than the Kasori, and I did the review in exchange for the free Kasori, that's been sponsored and I do have another video that's going to be coming up shortly. Um, a product, a company had contacted me to ask if I would review a product and I said yes. So I will be reviewing that product. I will use it, see how I like it, see if it does what it's supposed to do and share with you all what my take and experience is on using their product and um, of course, I will share their information below in my description box because that's part of me receiving the free product, a review for me to do a video in exchange for the free product. So I'm looking forward to um, using that product and it can be used in several different ways or on several different items. So I'm looking forward to uh, using that and sharing with you all what my experience was or had been. So I'm going to have to look this over and it looks like they are disposable. I don't want to have to dispose of it. So I'll take a look at it and maybe even do a YouTube search on how to apply these to my mic uh, that'll cut down on all that wind noise that goes on when I'm outside and it's windy. So it's called a wind jammer, a micro wind jammer. Reduce wind noise on your camera videos with our easy to fit micro wind jammer. So I'm gonna give that a try and see how it works and if I like it or no, but this was definitely purchased with our own dollars and they have no idea who I am. I'm just a, a customer through uh purchased it through amazon and i'll let you know or you will be able to tell uh if it's working or not when i'm outside like today it's um pretty windy out there so if i was to go out and walk around there out in the out good old outdoors you all would probably hear the wind when i turn certain ways i kind of had started holding my hand a certain way over the mic to see if it would help but it's a cloudy day. It's a lovely day, even though it's a cloudy day. Um, the water went down really quickly yesterday. It didn't make it to the um, our garden space. Thank goodness. Uh, we've still not put any seeds or plants in. We hope to do that very soon, like very soon. Uh, again, you know, you all knew that I was waiting for April the 15th to come and go because that is what I have been told and taught that um, after April the 15th was less chance of a hard freeze or frost. And I think we did have a hard freeze after the 15th. So I was glad we didn't have any actual plants up um, that had already broke through the ground or where we had purchased plants and put them in the ground as plants, not seeds. It's supposed to become less cloudy as the week goes on. And it looks like the weekend's supposed to be really nice. So looking forward to that. Last Saturday was really nice. Sunday, it was just one of those days we had worked so hard on Saturday and uh, I had worked really hard throughout the week of last week. My body was ready for a rest Sunday and I didn't even, even if I thought about going out or coming out and doing something Sunday afternoon, um, it was yucky outside. So that gave me even more of an excuse just to 
stay in up in the bonus room uh watch some tv hang out with my man and just uh, chill out and relax just the two of us just absolutely do nothing but watch tv and relax we need one of those days once a week and that's what our sundays are supposed to be so that's what we did one day I'll, I will oil that door, or Ken will oil that door. One of us will oil that door. And um, if you don't have the kind of oil that you spray on the doors, I have read that you could actually use cooking oil or cooking spray and don't think that I wouldn't do it. This is a gal that before she owned her own hammers and when she was a single mama raising two babies uh, and working four, sometimes five jobs a week, um, I have been known to use my high heels for a hammer. But so y'all, this is why I purchased a self-cleaning oven. However, having our, both of the ovens looked at, our refrigerator and our dishwasher uh, by our Whirlpool or our appliance um, repairman, he said the worst, the worst function that could have been put on the ovens and that can be used is the self-cleaning oven function mode whatever it's called and i had heard that before and i'd even read that before why in the world would they want to put the self-cleaning mode on the ovens and that even cost more um if you buy an oven with the self-cleaning and then i thought well there's two ovens that will be uh, uh, two self-cleaning modes and it is two self-cleaning modes so i was told by a repairman that's the worst thing that i could do for my oven is use the self-cleaning mode again so here i am just like a couple of you had shared with me and i had seen on other youtube channels I couldn't find my just normal baking soda but i thought hey the baking soda that I have in the fridge to keep it fresh, I'll just take that out and use it because it's getting pretty old anyway. So that's what I did. I busted it open, busted it. Is that a word? Busted it? I bust, I opened it. Let's just say I opened it, used the vinegar, made a paste in the bowl over there, and I'm letting it sit. He actually said that he will put the paste in his oven and let it sit overnight. I'm just gonna let it sit a couple to a few hours to just whenever I feel like getting in there and getting really nasty. I'll start trying to clean it up and I hope it does a good job. The reason why I'm doing this again, cause there was just a little bit of yuck left behind, like right around the front of the ovens. And I definitely did not like the results on the oven doors. So a couple of you had shared with me before that you just make a paste of with the bake, baking soda and the white vinegar and put on your door and with a little elbow grease, your doors come really clean. So that's what I'm doing here. Stick the Teflon oven liners. When I mentioned it to Ken and he was on his computer one night, he just hopped right on over to uh, Amazon and did a quick search and this is what he came up with. And this is actually, it, the one box would have the two liners. So after I get that good and cleaned up, the best that I possibly can, I'm gonna put these liners in there. I was looking for me glasses and they were on me head. Never clean or scrape the bottom of your oven again. Collect all the drips, drops, and spills. Easy to trim for custom fit. Use as an oven or pan liner, baking, cooking sheet, toaster, oven, barbecue grill, mat, and more. PBA free material ensures that your baking and grilling activities are food and family safe. And this is the Chef's Choice USA. Now I'm starting to wonder, can I put that on the very bottom? Cause it's just showing me use it like, oh boy, did we get the wrong thing? This was the two extra large liners and i know he came down and measured the inside of the ovens here but i'm starting to wonder if i can lay that on the very bottom just there under the elements that's my question hmm. okay we will be uh, doing a little more reading and seeing if I can find some pictures. You know, when I don't read it, I can always look at the pictures. But uh, 
Stacy, if you're watching, is this the ones that you have on, is this what you use inside of your ovens on the oven, I guess we'd call that floor, uh, under your heating elements? I might have to go back and watch your video where you did some around the house projects and see um, if yours were black. So that's what I've gotten myself into today. That was one whopping mess. And I don't mind a mess, and I don't mind hard work, but I do mind doing that again. Uh, yep, mm -hmm. I just don't know. I don't know. I just want it to look brand new is the problem. I don't want it to look like it's been used. Oh my goodness. And then that baking soda paste that you make up, it's so hard to get that film up. And you can see I still have some baking soda there that I need to get. I guess I'm just looking for it to be looking brand new again. You all know I love my stuff shiny bling to bling. And that's as good as it's going to get today. It's not going to look shiny bling to bling like it did when it was brand new. So that's what I'm telling myself. It's used. It's well loved. It's clean the best that you can possibly do it today. I have a mess of towels here, baking soda, uh, rags with the vinegar in it. I need to clean that out. However, I'm going to take these out to the porch on the back side kitchen porch there with that bucket there, pour a little bit of that vinegar in there, and I'm going to wipe over the racks, being that I already have them out. So now I'm going to, which I already did, but I took it back out. I'm going to slip these liners in there, and then I'm going to do my research if I'm supposed to be able to put them in there. Yeah, that's just the way I roll. So I'll show you what that looks like when I get the liners put in. So there we go. I've got them put in, and that's what it looks like with the liners in yonder. And that's what it looks like with that liner in there. And I didn't have to cut them or trim them. I just slipped so I'm them. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to push them all the way back or pull them out just to the front there. Because I do get a lot of splatters right there toward the front. So I think I'm going to leave them toward the front. Now to take the oven racks outdoors and use what I have here, the rest of the baking soda, the vinegar, my rags, and wipe over these two racks. I need to take the other rack out of here. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. Might as well get all three of them. Yeah, I'm at it, right, right. So that leads me into the question of the day. Do you all have a self-cleaning oven? And if you do, do you use yours? So I will leave the link listed below, um, the Amazon link listed below to um, this nonstick Teflon oven liner by Chef's Choice. And um, I'll leave that in the description box below. By no means is this a sponsored video. Uh, no affiliate links. And not that I don't hope to have an affiliate link at someday at some point. But this is by no means a sponsored uh, video, nor no affiliate links. It's just a link to maybe help you to be able to hop on over to Amazon and find it with just one click. So be sure to check out the description below. I'm looking for some feedback, um, some of your wisdom, your knowledge, your experience, or some constructive criticism. Uh, did I have the paste uh, made too clumpy? Should I have thinned it out more? Did I have too much in there? And how can I keep it from being such a messy mess? I am thinking maybe the next time that I do it, not maybe, but the next time I do it, I'm hoping to lay one of our old um, throws, towels, sheets, something there on the floor to uh, hopefully collect the baking soda clumps that fall in between the cracks there of the ovens 
And that's what I'm hoping to do the next time. Or is this just going to be a messy project each and every time that I do it and I need to be well prepared? What's your thoughts on how I can better do it? And what's your experience in using the baking soda and the vinegar method cleaning your oven? Mm -hmm.